Welcome, today we're gonna to talk about this 2018 Tesla Model 3 mid-range, a version of the Tesla that's no longer available. And we're gonna compare it to a, another similar Tesla product that we have, a 2019 uh, Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Um, they don't have a Standard Range Plus uh, Tesla anymore for the Model 3 or a mid-range. Uh, they've kind of simplified and streamlined their model uh, line now. So if you're looking for a brand new Model 3 or a newer one, uh, you have the Model 3 rear wheel drive, which is basically equivalent to like the standard range or mid range. Then you have the uh, Model 3 long range, which now comes standard with all wheel drive. And you have the Model 3 performance, which also comes standard with all wheel drive and is a long range as well. Uh, when the Model 3 first came out, there are different versions of the Model 3. So the Model 3 first came out for the 2017 model year. We have the Model 3 long range, then we have a mid range. Uh, then after that they kind of phased out the mid-range and then they added a standard range and standard range plus I know it can be a little bit confusing. I was at first But for those of you who are interested in maybe buying this Tesla or an older Tesla This will help you shed a, a little light on the differences. Uh, they are slight uh, for the most part The Model 3 is very similarly equipped uh, All across the board uh, They're all available with the enhanced autopilot. They're all upgradable to full self-driving uh, some might need a hardware upgrade, but pretty much every Tesla made uh, after 2019 has a full self-driving computer. So if you want to subscribe to the software or buy the software, it just needs a software update, and then it has the hardware to operate it. All right, so let's start off talking about this Tesla uh, Model 3 mid-range. Uh, so the mid-range, I think, was offered uh, at the onset of the Model 3 in 2017, and then it was kind of phased out in 2018, 2019. Tesla confuses people because they don't uh, really make changes based on model year. They might make changes mid-year or on the first quarter of 2000 whatever or the fourth quarter of 2000 whatever. Uh, they don't, they, they roll out changes pretty much as soon as they're ready. They don't wait till the next model year. So sometimes Teslas of the same year can be different or they uh, certain models might not be available. Uh, so the mid-range was uh, dropped. So the mid-range has a fully charged range of about uh, 260 miles uh, when fully charged. Uh, over here, we have a standard range plus. Uh, that has a fully charged range. This is a 2019 standard range plus, and the same one I have. That has a fully charged range of about 240 miles. Then in 2020, they uh, increased it to 250 miles. And then uh, in 2021, it was about 260 miles. And then in 2022, when they upgraded it to the uh, LFP batteries, it was uh, about 270 miles. Okay, <laughs> pretty confusing. I know, but it really it isn't. <laughs> okay, so the Model 3 mid-range um, is only available with rear-wheel drive. Um, and these, and this is, uh, you know, we're talking about Teslas in North America, obviously in different parts of the world. Uh, the options could be different. So this is pretty much North America Teslas. So the mid-range is only available in uh, rear-wheel drive. Uh, likewise, the standard range and standard range plus are only available in rear-wheel drive. If you want to get all-wheel drive, you'd have to get a long-range or a long-range performance version of the Tesla. Okay, so I guess the biggest difference between a mid-range and a standard range plus is the equipment. So the uh, mid-range Model 3 has the premium interior, where the standard range plus has the partial premium interior. So uh, the partial premium interior, uh, there are some slight differences. Um, and I, I could be incorrect, <laughs> so I'm sure people uh, correct me in the comments, but I think I'm fairly accurate. So I guess one of the biggest differences between the uh, partial premium interior and the premium interior is the sound system. So if we go over to the radio here and we go here, we can see that this has a subwoofer. Uh, if you like music, you'll definitely appreciate the sound system in the uh, long range or mid range Tesla with a premium interior because it does have a little bit better sound system. That's one thing I'm lacking in my own Tesla. I do love music, I'm a, I'm a musician, so I do wish I had that subwoofer. Also, from what I hear, on the uh, standard range plus Tesla over there, the stereo is a little bit different uh, as far as what's connected. <laughs> so the standard range and standard range plus do have speakers here, but they're not connected. <laughs> uh, so these, be, I guess you can get a, connect, a kit to connect them if you want. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of uh, you know backyard work or maybe a stereo place can do it. 
Uh, so that's the difference. Uh, you have actually connected speakers. For Tesla, I guess it's cheaper just to put speakers in all of them, but you know, uh, not connect them to make the difference in the sound system. So kind of weird, but I think it's uh, less expensive for Tesla to do it that way. Uh, so obviously this has a little bit better of a stereo system with the addition of a subwoofer and those uh, extra speakers. And then one other slight difference from the uh, between the partial uh, premium interior and the full premium interior is heated seats. This one has rear heated seats as well as front heated seats. My uh, Tesla Standard Range Plus and as well as that one, it does have heated seats, but you have to pay to unlock them. It's $300, not too bad to unlock. You get a software update and then all of a sudden your heated seats are unlocked. I pretty much have car seats and kids in my back seat, so I don't, you know, they're in booster seats. They don't need to be heated. Maybe eventually I might unlock it. Uh, so that's pretty much the differences between the mid-range Tesla and the standard range plus uh, Model 3 over there. Uh, you have a little bit longer range, about 260 miles, slightly better performance. I think 0 to 60 in 0.2 seconds, you know, faster, 5.1 seconds versus 5.3. So a little bit better performance and obviously a better stereo system and the rear heated seats with the full premium interior. So that pretty much sums up the differences between the Tesla Model 3 standard range uh, plus and the mid range. So uh, going back to Tesla, so, uh, you know, I did mention there's a standard range and a standard range plus. <laughs> so what's the standard range? The standard range has a slightly lower range. It's 220 miles. Uh, autopilot is not standard. Autopilot is traffic aware cruise control, which is pretty much standard in pretty much all Teslas uh, since 2019. On the standard range uh, Model 3, uh, if you want autopilot, you actually have to uh, pay $3,000 to upgrade it to autopilot. Um, I guess the, the whole deal with the standard range is that uh, Elon did uh, promise a $35,000 Model 3, but when it first came out, uh, I think uh, the first uh, Model 3s we were seeing were the more expensive long range, so the standard range was basically Elon's promise to offer a $35,000 Tesla, but I think not too many people bought it because they wanted ones with more features, so eventually it was discontinued. But guess what? Uh, now a brand new uh, uh, Tesla Model 3 rear, rear wheel drive is uh, you know pretty close to $37,000. And then you get a $7,500 tax credit, which actually makes it cheaper than $35,000. So eventually that uh, cheaper Model 3 really did come true. Uh, the interior is very... Uh, 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 the interior in the Model 3 is very sparse, but I, I really like it. It's quiet, it's comfortable. It's like a sensory deprivation chamber. I almost look like it as a uh, extension of our living space. Uh, sometimes my wife, if she needs a little break from the kids, she likes to just sit in the car in the in the driveway <laughs> and listen to music and go on her phone and take a little bit of mental break. It's like a uh, it's like a uh, isolation chamber. Um, and this beautiful uh, interior, even though this is a compact, you feel very spacious. You don't feel as claustrophobic uh, or suffocating versus some other uh, gas-powered vehicles. Um, and some people might ridicule the screen for being, you know, having to do all the settings and stuff, you know, change all the settings through the screen. Well, it's pretty easy, it's pretty intuitive. It's almost Apple-esque the way it's designed, so. But the nice thing uh, uh, with over their updates, they're constantly improving and adding features. So even though this uh, Model 3 is a 2018, the screen and functionality is very similar to what you get in a 2022 or 2023 Model 3. You don't have everything, but the functionality is, uh, for the most part, very similar. Uh, you know, there are some differences. Obviously, the new ones might have a faster processor uh, for the screen, but, you know, my, my uh, Tesla pretty much has the same system as this, my 2019, and I, I'm a, I drive all sorts of Teslas, you know, newer 2022 or 23s, and I really don't feel that lacking. I feel, you know, pretty happy with what I have. Uh, it's like an iPhone. You, you don't have to have, a, you know, the latest iPhone to operate iOS or use all the apps and features. So with these updates, it really keeps the car re relevant. Like... This car came out in 2018, but it wasn't until 2021 when they offered a blind spot camera. One day it got an over their update, and then all of a sudden when you put the turn signals on, and you have a blind spot camera. The, uh, you know, since this car came out, the display has changed many a times. They've added features, they've added new, new things to watch. They've added new video games. They've added uh, like this colorizer. So the car is constantly, it's a, it's a vehicle that even though it's getting older, it's constantly improving. <laughs> and as you can see, I can talk a long time uh, about Tesla's. I could probably talk about hours <laughs> for, about this one, which I'm not gonna do. If you visit our YouTube page, I have uh, lots of videos of Tesla's, some 
are raking in thousands and thousands of views 10 20 30 thousand views <laughs> so check it out and uh, pretty much i cover all the information you'd ever want to know about if not more on our youtube channel infinity of tacoma one about many different cars infinities teslas and all sorts of cars you can think about look at all this space here uh, normally there'd be a gas tank or an exhaust system here but you have more space uh, the tesla has a lot more uh, interior space and cargo space than a comparable a gas car because you're not hampered by the same design of a gas car since you have a battery and electric motors it frees up a lot of space uh, to uh, package the vehicle in a more efficient manner uh, lots of interior space in the back very comfortable and lots of interior space in the front the tesla model 3 is also very safe in fact uh, when the nhtsa tested the model 3 it's the safest vehicle they ever tested the lowest probability of injury in an accident out of any other vehicle on the road. It's fun to drive, it's technologically advanced, and it's also one of the safest cars in the world, if not the safest cars in the world, at least according to the NHTSA, but what do they know? <laughs> uh, then, since there's no engine, we have a front, so more storage space. It also adds to the safety. Uh, you have all the space to absorb crash energy in a frontal collision since there's no engine here, so you have a crumple zone that's 60% larger than a gas-powered vehicle. Then the battery, uh, the weight of the battery makes it safe as well. The batteries are very heavy, uh, very, very heavy. But since the batteries are so low to the ground, this has an extremely low center of gravity. It's like a keel. It's like an anchor keeping this car planted to the ground. So it makes it very hard to roll over. Also makes it very fun to drive, even though this might be one of the slowest Teslas. Uh, it's still very fast. <laughs> even though it's one of the slowest Teslas, you're going to be faster than most uh, cars on the, the road. Zero to 60, a little over five seconds, top speed close to 140 miles an hour and with electric vehicles you have instantaneous power uh, the way the electric motors deliver power it's instantaneous it's uh, a level of throttle response and instant power that's not comparable to a gas car once you drive a tesla for a week or two it'll be actually hard to go back to a reg regular vehicle especially with uh, the amazing autopilot traffic aware cruise control which is, i'm going to tell you if you drive and tra stop and go traffic you drive on the highway you're going to absolutely love autopilot. You're going to be so spoiled by autopilot that you're not going to want to drive any other vehicle for any length of time without it. Well, that pretty much sums up the video on this 2018 Tesla Model 3 mid-range. Uh, hopefully it was informative, regardless if you're just looking for information in general or this specific one. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon and have a wonderful day.